Hello everyone, welcome to a, another Parrot Teacher live session. We've got Baby Olive in the background, relaxing on the stand. Hopefully she'll pop over and say hello on, on screen, up nice and close. But in the meantime, you have to deal with just me. So today we're going to have some topics as usual. I'm going to answer a couple of questions that people have asked in the interim, maybe sort of allude to something as well, talk a little bit about my course, our course that's coming up, and then do the usual Q&A and chaos bit at the end where you know you guys can ask me and Sophie questions and we can sort of hopefully help you out of your parrot related problems. So this the topic of this live is pro primarily going to be enrichment and then a bit on hormones. I want to talk about enrichment because it's such an important part of having a bird, looking after a parrot and generally just making their lives much better. Enrichment is so important. And if you think about enrichment, it's important to any living creature. We need our enrichment, be it um, doing sports, going for a walk, eating nice food, or just playing on our Xbox or whatever else. Every, every creature needs enrichment from the tiniest to the biggest, and it's so important to provide it. So before I launch into that, I just want to say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone in chat. Hello, there's quite a few of you all saying hi. Um, so just hi to everyone as a sort of group thing, because there's so many of you. Um, thank you for joining me today, and hopefully you'll find this session as usual uh, uh, and lots, lots of fun, enjoyable. What are you? Doing? She, she's eating. She managed to find a little bit of uh, walnut in there, a little monster. So that's nice for her. So hello to everyone. Let's begin and talk about enrichment. Now I just mentioned how important it is, so I'm not going to reiterate that. But let's talk about different types of enrichment. So you have sensory enrichment, which is basically, as you'd imagine, enrichment that stimulates the senses, the um, taste, sound, touch, sight. For example, for a parrot, that could be a brightly colored toy with lovely textures they can get their beak into, or it could be uh, maybe showing them um, a, a vision on the screen, maybe of a, a rainforest environment, all sorts of things like that. Sensory enrichment is kind of like a, a bog standard type of enrichment if that makes sense and it's really important and i think it's really fun as well because a lot of people dismiss some bits from sensory enrichment so with birds they kind of assume yep sight is really important taste um texture meh, you know because their sense of taste isn't very good but texture that is so important because birds love different textures they love manipulating things with their beaks they love using their little tongues to um run them along different things i don't know if you've ever seen your parrot like almost lick a smooth surface like glass over and over again that's because they like the feel of it and i think it's also often overlooked so anyway we've got uh, sight taste texture smell probably not big an issue because they don't have a very good sense of smell and it's just yeah sensory enrichment is really important i love my sensory enrichment i'm uh, attracted to bright colors just like my parrots it's something we share in um common i got like a youtube like for being part of a community i can't show you because this will like ruin the lighting but um it was awesome and it glows really bright even a little bit too bright for me perhaps and then we have um environmental or habitat enrichment so if you think about that that would be things you pop into the environment to improve your parrot's life for example the cage or outside the cage both are um, habitat enrichment so you put toys in for example substrate on the base of the cage um, or just like having different bowls they can interact with, all sorts of things that enrich the environment they live in. Again, like the human example, having ornaments around or things to attract our eyesight and enjoy. Also, one thing I'll have to mention as well, a lot of these enrichments will cross over. So if you've got a enrichment that sort of applies to different categories, it's completely fine and normal. So then after that, we have cognitive enrichment. That's my favorite type. But cognitive enrichment for parrots specifically would be um, foraging toys, puzzle solving. <laughs> or just screaming in the background. Uh, foraging toys, puzzle solving, and training as well. That is cognitive enrichment. You know, pushing your parrot and just allowing them to sort of learn new things because they love learning. Because they're um, like evolved, intelligent creatures, they like learning new skills. And you can see almost the sense of satisfaction sometimes when our parrots do work out a particularly complex puzzle toy for a treat, or if they do learn a trick for their treat, just like us, we get a sense of satisfaction from doing good work. They do too. It's just on a bit of a smaller scale. And I love cognitive enrichment. It's my favorite part, I think. I mean, all of them are really fun to see and see our parrots interact with the environment, but cognitive enrichment is awesome. I just need to look at my little thing here because these are these are official ones as well. So it's not just something I'm making up. <laughs> I wish it was making it up. It's so easy if I just made stuff up because um, you have to learn it yourself and actually like apply it all. I'm just rambling now. I'm just be quiet now. So anyway, social enrichment, another really important one. Social enrichment, again, because if you may have seen my recent video on should you keep parrots alone, it's also important. And social enrichment can come from us, 
as a human. So your parrot gets social enrichment from us, us talking to them, interacting with them, playing with them, having lots of fun. Training can also fall into that category or with each other. Again, another very important, like socializing, peeping at each other, snacking, uh, communicating with each other. And social enrichment is really important for flock animals because parrots are all flock animals. Don't really get many solo parrots in the wild, you know, unless there's certain circumstances, etc. So social enrichment is very important for them. They need it so badly. And it's something we really need to fulfill either as us humans. I think I said this in my very first live, actually. Us, us humans need to fulfill it if there's no other parrots in, in the environment, or you can have it for other parrots. And you can get a little bit from cross species, but it generally does is better when it's the same species, they can communicate in their own language. You know, me and a French person may be able to get on to a certain extent and you know convey certain concepts, but we won't be able to talk to each other unless we knew each other's language. And it's the same with parrots and different parrot species. So you can't just like dump in a cockatiel and a conya and expect them to know what they're talking about. Certain on a certain level, yes, but beyond that, it's not as easy. And then finally, um, hello to everyone. Sorry, before I go on, everyone, hello everyone joining in. If you have questions, remember I will be talk, taking questions later, and Sophie will probably pop in as well. Um, the usual parrot chaos that's towards the end after we've done the sort of topic side of things i like to start with a topic just launch into things get people to filter in and maybe some hopefully have something interesting for you guys the final type of nutrient the big five of um, enrichment is nutritional enrichment and that is anything to do with food so that can be again crosses over taste texture foraging for food anything to do with food is nutritional enrichment and it's this is one this one sort of cropped up a little bit more people have tended to um ignore this one a little bit saying you know parrots shouldn't get their enrichment from food it shouldn't really be a primary source of enrichment for them but it's creeping in i think it's really important because if you think about it parrots spend so much time foraging in the wild why on earth would you not use this part of enrichment we enjoy eating so why would a parrot and just because they have no sense of smell and just because their sense of taste is a little bit worse well quite a bit worse but they still taste stuff doesn't mean they can't enjoy the textures of food. Doesn't mean they can't enjoy foraging for food. And if you have a conya or maybe a macaw, a sweet beaked parrot, you know how much they like their, their sweet flavors, how much they will go for them. You know, so it's important to not ignore nutritional enrichment. And that does lead on to a plug for our course, because I do have to mention it. And I think it's important to keep talking about it. We do have a course on nutritional enrichment coming up, the different ways you can apply it, why it's so important, um, some of the sort of aspects of how birds select their food as well. We talk about that. Look at some studies as well that have been done on various animals, uh, sorry, animals, on parrots, basically, to how they choose food and what they enjoy doing. So if you are interested in that course, do feel free to book. Um, if Sophie can, if she can hear me, pop on a link to the course so people can sort of like click on the shop and learn a bit more about it. The morning sessions still got a thank you. Thank you very much, Sophie. The morning session still has a fair few places, but the evening session is selling out quite quickly. So do consider booking if you are interested. But nutritional enrichment, ever so important. So let's just have a quick break. Now I've talked about enrichment to catch up and say hello to people. Oh, Tash, a military macaw and a cockatiel. It's quite a big difference. It's quite funny how the cockatiel wants to be friends, but the macaw is not that interesting. Now, oh, baby. All right. So I can't. Do you want to sit on my hand like this? It's going to be easier for you. So baby Olive normally sits just on the bare hand. But when it comes to these lives, you're getting excited. You're not even that nervous, are you? She gets nervous during live sometimes, like last time, because I think the light's right up in her face. Hello. Are you going to wave to everyone? Are you, are you very excited because I'm talking so loudly? Are you very excited? <laughs> he's so cute this this creature is so cute and she's come such a long way hello mr teeny as well she's come such a long way from the scared um bitey monster she was when she first arrived i'm he, he, this is a good example i'm gonna talk about coins a little bit later and how overstimulate they get but this monster took a chunk out of this hand when she first arrived and now it's just mostly kisses and cuteness do you want to go back to the snack are you a bit worried about that light no oh. Well, at least she came to say hello. I'm not going to force her because I don't really believe in forcing parrots to do anything. So she's wrong. You know, it should all be consensual. She is the cutest. So again, hello to everyone. Oh, so Gina, yeah, squirts favorites, crinkle paper, cupcake paper. Yeah, ours love crinkle paper. Our Conyers just throw them out and go crazy. Oh goodness, she is. She's so cute. So let me catch up on the chat a little bit, and then we'll go on to the next bit. 
<laughs> yeah, Gina, I know. I was like, to, I try. We try not to keep birds out during work because they are just so like it. And also, someone asked me actually um, after the last live, do, is this all? Is this all your parrots do? They just sit on that stand. But no, this is during a live. You know, so this is a kind of a special circumstance. Normally, the parrots be all over the place. Then you know, let them do what they want. But because it's a live stream, we have to have some sort of like control, I suppose. So they've all had their morning outings, their afternoon outings. And then after the live, assuming they come out anyway, they'll have some more outings after that as well. Um, so yes, they do do not just sit on a stand all day normally, but obviously Sophie's doing modding. I'm sitting here. I can't supervise them properly. So they only have one in the background enjoying themselves. So it's much easier. Uh, yeah, so hello everyone. So yes, I'm going to be taking questions a little bit later. Mahogany pod's awesome, amazing. Everyone loves it. So. Sophie's hopefully going to maybe filter down the questions for me later. So let's launch into the next bit. So before I go on to a couple of questions people asked before the live stream, I always talk a little bit about something's coming up. And it's not a plug for uh, selling or anything. Um, so sorry, lemon rice. So we're not sure, honestly. We're thinking of maybe privately recording it ourselves and then making it available to download, but we're not sure. So at the moment, it's only going to be available at those live sessions on that day. We will keep you informed about that in the future. But anyway, so patrons do not spoil this or anything, but me and Sophie do have another announcement coming up. We will be having a little super secret surprise for everyone. Um, if you want to guess on it, feel free. But if you already know, don't spoil it for everyone else because we're fairly excited about it. Sophie's very excited. I'm a little bit less excited because all sorts of things are going on in the environment. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, just to allude to that, that something is coming up soon. If you want to take guesses as well, I do have another a new desk as well. I don't, that's a hint, but it's a really vague hint. So it probably doesn't help at all. So let's take a couple of questions. Then we're going to talk about hormones. Then I'm going to see how baby Olive's getting on, if she's getting bored, if she wants to pop back in, or if she wants to interact again. And then we'll go to the question section and just the general burly chaos. I won't be doing any training, live training today, because I, I don't want to try and get Chip to do it, do his trick because he doesn't want, he's not really into it at the moment. <sighs> Where are you off to? You have to, you're getting bored already. Just make sure you tweet at me when you're ready. So um, sand substrates cropped up a couple of times as well. It, kept, it cropped up in our Discord server. It's cropped up as a question in my DMs a couple of times as well. Um, we do not recommend sand substrate. And substrate gets kind of a bad rep, mostly because people use inappropriate types for their parrots. There's lots of appropriate types. You know, you've got Carefresh, you've got Easy Chick, all very good. And there's lots of inappropriate. And sand... There was a study done on it that is just no good for parrots. I've, I've been trying to find a link to that study as well since I initially read it. It's been driving me nuts. And I don't know where it was. But yes, do not use sand because it can cause crop impaction. It's almost guaranteed to get ingested on some level if you've got a parrot. It does blow around as well, depending on what, you what type you use. If you're using the non-blow around type, it's even worse for the impaction issue. So avoid sand. And then also, I've, I've had a lot of people who have just got Conyers contacting either me, Sophie, or our business, or... Um, like um, in general, basically talking about Conyers. I don't know if they're becoming a very trendy pet again because it was Ringnecks before they were a trendy pet because of social media. Conyers are becoming a trendy pet. And if you noticed with Olive just now, when she was sat on my hand and I'm talking loudly, you saw how overexcited she got there. And Olive's pretty good now. She's very well trained. She's a very sweet girl. But imagine another Conyers in that situation or it's one that's just come into your house they might bite very well bite you in that situation because they're so overstimulated. So um, generally the questions I've been getting are like, how, how do I bond with my Konya? What do I do with my Konya? Take your time, let them settle in. You can't just expect them to like immediately be happy in your house. You need to let them relax and get to know you. And also you want to start teaching them good manners right from the start. If they don't know how to interact with your hand, they don't know what to do. So you want to teach them to interact softly with you. And the best way to do that is, by holding the treat up and above, so they have to reach for it. I would demonstrate with Olive, but I haven't got my little treat thing, annoyingly. Um, what I'll do, actually, I'll demonstrate now. I'll try and see if I can do it now, because I think it's a good good example. I think this was covered in another one, another live as well, but I don't see any reason why we can't show you now. Righty, baby, you're going to target. So when you're targeting, you want to do soft targeting. So where are you going? Put this up really badly. You want to do soft targeting, so you come from above and to the front from a distance, so she has to reach ever so gently touches and then rewards. Again, you'd want to do that saying touch and you want to say a bridge as well. You want good practice, but I'm just doing this demonstration. Also, a really easy technique for encouraging your conyo, any parrot to be gentle. Can you come there? 
good girl, is coming from above and, and coming from above and to the front, just the same, but make them reach that tree so they can't get any bite force. And it's so simple with targeting and that, but over time, it does pay dividends. I want to keep these treats here in case I need them for later. And um, it does pay dividends and it does teach your parrot to interact with you softly. So if you're just starting out, start off with targeting, start off with treating them, getting all those habits into the best way, uh, the best form. Make sure that they're, they're happy to train and doing well. She is very cute, Claire. She's so well behaved as well. Do you want to come over again? Or are you going to be nervous again? Do you want to treat this time? Away for me. You can away for everyone. What a good girl. You're going to spin for everyone. Am I doing it in the wrong hand? I'm not doing the right cue, am I? Wave one more time. Good girl. So Olive's a bit funny with which, what, which hand you cure to wave as well, uh, to spin with as well. But um, yeah, she's very sweet. And she's a good example of best practice, basically, by using techniques such as soft targeting and making sure you do the treat from above. So to all those conyers on who are asking that, if you're watching, make sure you do follow best practice with your parrot. Get into good practices. I, was, I said this in a consult the other day, and it's in those Patreon video as well. You need to build your foundation for what you want. You need to build your foundation. <laughs> you want more treats, don't you? One more little baby. Build your foundation because if you don't build that foundation, all those lovely tricks you want to do aren't going to happen. Where do you want to go? You can't have a laptop, baby. You can't have a laptop. All right. If you want to stay with me for a second, then we can go in in a second. Again, live streams. Yeah, but she's so well behaved. Build your foundation first. And then build on that. So you've got your passive bonding, you've got your all your training there. Then you go up to your target training, your best practice, step up training. Then you can do all the fun things. If you try and jump straight to those things, then that tower is going to collapse. Everything's going to fall apart. It's going to go really badly. I hope that ramble was educational and useful. How do we train her to wave? Sophie, do you want to cover that in the chat? Because look, I don't think Miss Miss Baby Olive is going to want to demonstrate again, are you? No, you can't have my drink either. It's not good for you. Right, I'm going to pop her back in. Give me one second. I'll be back. I want to give her a drink as well because she's thirsty. You're such a good girl. You come in. Is it too exciting? Do you want to stay out or do you want my drink? Should I just... Sophie? Yeah. Do you fancy, like, popping baby? No. She's basically too excited. She doesn't want to go back into her home. So I'm just going to leave her here for a second. She's gotten so excited by all the training and everything. Look at you. She's currently kissing Sophie's hand and basically refusing to go in. So it's like, you know, sometimes put in bird tone. They don't want to go because they get so fun, enjoy themselves. There's a reward there, but she literally just wants to stay out now, even though she's getting fussy and she's thirsty. Anyway, totally dist distracted there. So let's talk a little bit about hormones. And then the chaos has already started with baby Olive. No, she doesn't. She doesn't know what she wants to do. She's she's getting a drink now, so she may just stay out. Sophie's just caved in and given her a drink. Because um, we this stand isn't very appropriate because the bowls are too deep and they'll end up either washing in it or just going head first. We don't really trust them for drinks. So let's talk about hormones. Now, hormones is a big topic. I just finished a hormone series on my channel talking about various factors of hormones, like um, are they even bad? You know, what signs of them, what causes them, and some solutions to them. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the aspects of that in this video because some questions cropped up, a couple of people DM, and I just thought it'd be very useful and interesting. Let's look at what we've got here. So I want to explore, expand a little bit on signs of hormones we misconstrue or that we think are other behaviours. And this is happening an awful lot. And I've seen it a lot on social media. I always end up going back to a mini rant on about social media when I come on here. So forgive me, this is it for today. And like people were encouraging hormonal behavior, but misconstruing it as bonding behavior or cute behavior. For example, they were like doing that. I'm not obviously wouldn't demonstrate that with a parrot because I wouldn't want to encourage it. Doing that, the parrot was like um, resting their head back and thrusting, and they were like, oh, they love it. They love it. It's so, so they're bonding with me. They're bonding with me. It's getting hormonal. You're going to get bitten in a second. And the amount of hormonal behavior gets misconstrued, especially by people who are relatively new to parrots. It's just so important to do your research and learn about them. And sometimes it can catch you out. Sometimes even it can catch us out. For example, there's a fine line, especially with conyers again, between affectionate and hormonal. Say, for example, um, this Pickles doesn't do this, but I'll use her as an example. Pickles is cuddling here. And the next thing I know, she's starting to rub. She's starting to get very excited. And you can hear her twittering and almost flicking her wings. Now, wing beating and wing flicking are completely different. A wing beat 
it's like uh, just a couple of motion, motions and they normally do that to settle down like a fluff up wing flickings like repeated like over and over again and that is a hormonal behavior and it's very easy to misconstrue the two so it's really important to get it right and observe your parrot um, carefully i've got some examples in videos as well which may help and make sure that you're not encouraging hormonal behavior by accident because it, it's not bad it's not there's nothing bad about hormonal behavior but it does have bad consequences sometimes and it's well worth managing in the home environment because it's just it leads to sort of a very how to put it really i hate to use the word bad or undesirable because it's natural but it does lead to undesirable behaviors such as you know egg laying infertile egg laying, which is dangerous stress um aggression all the things we don't like it's just no yeah exactly the amount of times i've yeah exactly adara the amount of times that people are naughty with bird of hand and just laugh i saw this thing where someone just said oh yeah they're naughty just grab them and move them elsewhere time out calm down sorted not sorted and i also wanted to expand the dietary supplementation as well because a lot of people asked about that because they said oh, i just sort of touched on it because i didn't want to make the video too long in it so dietary supplementation we're talking about adding flowers in flowers are proven to help with hormones we're not talking about a huge impact. It's not going to solve the problem, but various A and T blends do make an, a difference, especially if you do everything else. Caramel is a good flour to use. Uh, Tulsi tea is a good uh, flour to use on its own. Make sure it's not from a tea bag. It's loose leaf and brewed um, cold, so it's cold when they ingest it. Very good. You can also provide it dry. There's loads of avian tea blends. I think Jason's started to make his own avian tea blends. If in the UK, you've got polys. So it's well worth giving it a try because they are, they're, di they're nutritional enrichment as well. They're lots of fun for your parrot. And avian tea blends are very good in general for your parrot to ingest and enjoy. And we, we I mean, I must admit, a long time, it feels like a long time ago now, I was quite skeptical about them. I was like, it's just flowers, you know. And I tried them and the parrot loved it. And they, there was a noticeable impact, so it's well worth trying if you consider it. It's not hokey, it is proven, it is very good. Gamer Girl, you just literally, if you just popped in, I literally was just talking about green cheeks. Um, be prepared, do some research about them, their behaviors, and green cheeks, and be prepared to have them. And for potentially a quite a nice ride, but a potentially a rocker, rock, rocker, a rocky ride of them because they're Konyas are probably one of my favorite types of parrot. And I, me and Sophie said it before when we first. We're looking at another one after um, getting chip and fish. We weren't considering a Konya, and then Pickles just just like adopted us almost. And then if it's rescue Konya's central now. So yeah, Konya's are amazing, green cheeks, etc. But just um, take it very slow with them. Try and train good manners with them as early on as you can through what I just mentioned earlier in the video through um, treating appropriately, uh, soft targeting. Do be aware you probably are going to get nipped and beat a little bit. Let them cuddle, but don't let them cuddle too much and inappropriately, um, and that sort of thing. Um, again, if you watch back or watch some other videos, I've got loads of Konya content because they they outnumber our poor cockatiels like two, almost three to one. So that actually brings me to the end of um, the pre-prepared stuff that I like to talk about. So it's going to be time for the usual chaos with birds coming out and me addressing any of your questions, anything else you want to go on about. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, talk about any topic. Um, yeah, I think Pickles and Scampi will have to come out a little bit because I think um, they're just brewing up for it. And maybe they'll be cute and cuddle. Good. Doing caramel tea. I like a bit of it as well. It's really good. Um, so what age does hormonal behavior arise? It, it depends on the bird and a different species. Most commonly, it's called the terrible two. So that gives you an indicator. But sometimes it can be even earlier, later. It depends on environmental factors. The more environmental factors, in fact, again, this is one of the videos, the more environmental factors feeding into hormonal behavior, for example, not enough sleep, um, inappropriate diet, um, inappropriate petting, the more likely you're going to have hormonal behavior. It's like a checklist. The more that gets checked off, the more likely it's going to happen. So it can happen any sort of time. So Mandy's beauty. I have a question. My one-year-old green cheek has broken her brand new blood flight feather. Oh, dear. Two times would not... What is there a reason she keeps doing it? I'd look at maybe the cage environment. How how is she doing it? Is she like catching her feathers when she's climbing around? Is she getting overexcited? Um, also, it's well worth treating that as well. You know, even if you're just putting some um, corn corn flour on it just to stem bleeding, you're probably, you're probably doing that already. But yeah, look at the environment. And what's causing it? I mean, I wouldn't say it's a particular reason. She's out when she does it. Could you maybe expand on how she does it? Is she doing it by crashing into things? Is she doing it by pulling at them? Um, because it would help like give an answer to it. 
Right, have I missed? So I've covered Lemon Rice's question. Do feel free to drop questions. If I've missed them, uh, do forgive me. I'm going to try to read back. I like the name Melinda Naruto. It's very anime themed. Right, let's... Uh, I'm going to start with Melinda and I'm going to work way down. If I've missed your question before that, please do repeat them. So one of my buddies is not feeling well. I went to the avian vet because of his left eye being watery. Naruto is syringe trained, does not like the taste of the medicines. What to do? Do I need to grab him a force medication with his beak? That's a last resort. Um, if he's syringe trained, you can also try um, soaking millet in the medicine. That may work. That may encourage him to eat it. Try, um, try to get him to do it voluntarily. That's the best way only catch him up and do it and force him if you absolutely have to, because it will break trust and it kind of defeats the object of it. Um, you can mix it with juice. If you syringe tray, mix the medication with juice, something he likes. Um, those are the usual techniques. With baby Olive, for example, when she had to have medication, we used to um, use a tiny, it's a very rare thing. We don't approve of human food at all, but for this situation, it was okay. Tiny bit of bread and dip, um, put the medicine on that. She'd eat that. Would never use human food otherwise we don't really approve of it for birds um again adding juices try lots of different things again last resort for grabbing a beak so tash my macaw is attached to me and wants to be me all the time is this hormonal behavior probably maybe maybe not depends there's other stuff going on if your macaw is just attached to you and wants to be with you that could be just they're just attached to you and want to be with you if they're like rubbing themselves on you if they're constantly um eye pinning going like really excitable on you or getting aggressive towards other people when they're on you, maybe, but um, that's a yes or no answer, I'm afraid. Right, let's try and scroll through. Hello to everyone who's joining us or who's joined us recently. No, Adara, yeah, I like to, we like to sprinkle stuff on the bottom of the cages as well. Um, the substrate is a lot of fun for them. They love um, picking through it. Uh, Mason, dog it. I was trying to get my cock to eat more veggies. I've got a video on that. It is can be challenging with them. Lots of different techniques. Try the kebabs. Try threading leaves for the bars. Try freeze dried veggies. Try herbs. Um, fresh herbs can be a good bridging tool for it. Try to eat yourself in front of this. Loads of different ways. Um, it works in different ways for different people. Do we do we do not sell birds? No, we don't breed. We don't sell birds. Um, we don't. Um, we we're not into that sort of thing at all. If it happened accidentally, I don't know. But yeah, no, we're we're pretty good on. We're quite happy of our flock, and we don't feel there's we need to bring any more birds to sell into the environment because there's so many rescues that need help at the moment. As Sophie said, we encourage adoption where possible. Um, so Mandy again, maybe crashing like Sophie said, it might be worth doing some. Um, it may be worth doing some formal flight training with her to try and improve her flight, especially if she's very young, especially, or she's unfit. It's the best way to do it. Just get some formal flight training, even if it's just hops. I did a recall training video recently. Just start there, little hops. Get her used to flying, get her used to the environment. It may be worth as well. It, again, may sound hokey, but it, it's well worth doing. You just take her around the room and let her see everything in case it's something scary that's causing her to crash and be hesitant to land having more landing points through the room. So if she does get tired or she is feeling clumsy, she can find somewhere to land and be happy on. Oh dear, Joe, I can't be pleasant for your little one. I, I, I think, yeah, that, that does happen sometimes. So Sharon, my cockle still gets fixated in everything and won't eat. Um, she, sorry, let me start again. My cockatoo gets fixated in everything and won't eat for most of the day. He just wants to be near the object. Is that hormonal behavior? I have the tea, but don't know how to prepare it. Um, we've got, I've got videos on preparing it. Preparing it is literally brewing it like a tea. So you pop the tea in, um, let it um, steep, stew, whatever. Uh, let it cool down. Then you can serve it. You can serve the wet bits in there over chop or food as well. You can provide it dry. There's all sorts of different ways you can serve it. That'll probably it, Mandy. She's probably not used to flying then if she came flipped. So I'd highly suggest just trying to do some, just get her used to flying short hops. And then the more she gets used to it, the more confident she's going to have her flying. And, you know, that's just one of the sad consequences of clipping. It does affect the bird's abilities to fly. They still try to fly a lot of the time, and some of them can still get lift, depending on the clip, but then they can't do it properly because they're not used to it. Uh... Oh, okay. This is a good question. Lemon rice, very good question. I'm still sorry if I'm I'm, I'm still working my way through. And I'm, after this question, I'm going to get the little babies out because I don't want them to miss out on um, having mucking about. Can you expand on sonic enrichment for conyers? Any type of music best? Would jungle sounds be too stressful due to predator sounds? 
Um, if you have like crow noises going on or like lions roaring, maybe that'll be a bit intimidating, not that the lions predate upon um, Conyers. But Sonic and Richmond Conyers is good. We, we <clears throat> excuse me, we like to practice something called conditioned calm, which is a good technique to teach calm to parrots during the day. I've got a video on that, but I'll quickly explain now. Conditioned calm is basically you play a sound before bedtime, about 10, 20 minutes before bedtime, normally something soothing like uh, rainforest sounds, um, thunderstorm sounds or uh, classical music, whatever, something nice and relaxed. And they associate it with bedtime. So if they get noisy during the day, you can play that sound and they start relaxing. You can also use that sound for auditory enrichment. You can use um, you can use Konya sounds as long as it's not constant and they're just literally just looking at it and you're supervising it. That's fine, you know, and you can see how they respond to it. If they get agitated, etc. cetera, you can stop doing it. Some distant bird noise is fine. And you can even use crow noises for descents work as well, because we use it, a crow, because we have crows constantly and they're still bothered by them, but they're nowhere near as bad as they used to be because of the training we've done. You can de use other noise for descents like pred predatory animals. So yeah, I mean, you can use all sorts of music. For example, the boys love dance music and um, trance music. The Conyers are keener on high pitch music purely because they probably get stimulated by sounds and all sorts. So give me one second, let's pop them out and see how they're gonna how are you going to be? Oh, I suspect you're going to want to snack because I've put fresh treats in there for you. Let's have some treats here in case you want to do some training. Hello. Hello, stinker. You coming out? You coming out as well? Where are you going? Where are we going? We're going to come say hello to everyone before we eventually snack. Hello. Hello, Pickles P says hello. Scan P seems nervous about the light. This is normally why I sleep in front of the computer, by the way. So they're not really big fans of the, the light, like to illuminate quite so. Are you getting excited? Here's another perfect example. I'm getting excited. They think I'm excited. They're getting overstimulated as well. And Pickles is dancing on my hand right now. Are you dancing? Are you dancing for everyone? Are you excited? And you're being really calm, aren't you? Are you a good boy? Wow. I'm I'm shocked. Pickles is getting overexcited and Scan P's just relaxing. Oh, I thought they were going to go straight for the treats behind me, honestly. They may still do, but we'll wait and see what happens. So let's try and catch up. Uh, Peggy, if he just lost a feather, that's not really a big issue. You know, as long as it's just come out normally, it's completely fine. Why does he keep zooming to the bottom? It's really annoying. I want to catch up with everyone. Okie dokie. We don't want you on there. Thank you. Little terror. So you can step up for me. That's a good boy. Let's see if you do want snacks because you're going to turn off my live stream and we're all going to be very sad. Do you not want the snack? Oh, you want the pony? Okay. Oh. Yeah, there we go. And you, Pickles has been really mean to him recently on that stand as well. They they share for most of the time, and then when she gets bored of her bowl, she'll be like, "I'm gonna chase you off now." Uh, right. Let's sorry. Let's catch up. Natasha, hello. One of my colleagues is very wary of everything that happens around him by nature. Because of that, he gets moody and defensive a lot and bites us quite a bit. How can we help him feel more safe? Descents work. I've got a video on descents. Getting used to different things that are scary in a constructive way that are really, really helpful. Help build his confidence through training. Just um, just build his confidence, you know. Make sure he's very a well-rounded Konya. Uh, the descents work will explain a lot better than I can in this because there's a lot to cover with that. So, yeah, descents work, training build his confidence. So Melinda as well, with the millet, make sure it's a small bit and make sure the whole thing's soaked so he doesn't really have much of a choice. So Paris on Wheels, does it make any difference whether you feed avian tea as a tea or dry in their tea time mix? I think it's actually ingested better as a tea, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with providing it as dry. They will still get many of the benefits from it. It's, it's still quite as good. I mean, either ways works, you know, um, either steep to dry or as an avian tea, all of it's completely fine. That's cute, Gina. Uh, some conyers do that. They are quite clumsy. How did we find our birds game, girl? So um, we went to rescues, basically. Um, Pickles was, I can't tell you again, I say this story every single live stream, so I'm not going to do it again, as tempting as it is. Um, we basically went to rescues and they were rehomed to us. Um, Louis and Kipling's a slight exception, someone we knew had a change in circumstances wanted them to go to a good home so we took them on even though we felt like it's a bit much but we're like fine and they're getting on very well actually um they're very cute kipling stepping up much better on me and louis just wants to be a lot which is very very rewarding he's such an adorable bird i'll be doing a video on disabled birds coming up soon as well with contributions from some of you as well because i want to I, I mean a lot of you guys know 
a lot about how to look after pe- uh, birds. Because just because, you know, someone is an expert or whatever doesn't mean they know everything. And a lot of people will acquire knowledge just by trial and error themselves. You know, it's all part of a big experiment. We're all bird owners and a lot of us will have something to contribute. And I think that's often overlooked by a lot of people due to arrogance. And I don't like that at all. I had a comment at the end of the last, last stri- uh, live stream where I told someone off for that sort of behavior. So, yes, um, all coming on. What have we got going it seems that I have an allergy to substrate. What else would you recommend? Um, what you could try try a different type of substrate. Um, what sort of allergy? If it's dust related, then I well, we really like Easy Chew purely because it's dust extracted. It, um, if you're really struggling and you can't use substrate, then you can't use substrate. You know, you just have to try something different. Uh, Sherry, just a question. My two African greys feed each other, but if I haven't got a nest box up, they won't mate with each other all day. Quite, they may, they may do. Um, just because I don't have a next nest box, they may still mate. A bit of feeding and regurgitation is um, normal behaviour. It can be hormonal, but if it's not very often, it's normal. If it's constant, yes, obviously hormonal. They may still mate, and they may just drop it at the bottom of the cage or in a place in your bird room or house. So, yeah, they still they're just not, not having a, the absence of a nest box does not preclude mating behaviour. So, Rob, my bird is bonded with me, and I wonder if he would just fly away if I took him outside. No, <laughs> Rob, don't just take him out. Um, a lot of there's a lot of factors at play. Uh, if you want to take him out, take him out of a travel carrier, uh, put a harness on him. You do not want to lose your bird in that way. It is the thing is, even if your bird loves you, it's bonded to you, it really wants to be with you. You can take them out into that environment. All it takes is a crow to fly by, something to just panic them, they're gone. And because they're in that panic mode, they won't automatically think, my human's there, I want to return to them. They will just keep going, and then it's gone, especially with small parrots. So don't take the risk. You can obviously do free flight training. If you can find a really good free flight trainer, go through all the steps at home, train your bird in the house, um, get someone to train with you. And, you know, so basically you, for free flight training, it's not just training the bird, it's you need training as well. So train yourself, train the bird, then maybe give it a try, but please don't risk it. Uh, there's loads of horror stories on that one. Just, just please don't. Oh my goodness, I'm so far behind. I'm literally only just at the bit in the chat where uh, Pickles and Scampy came out. Oh my goodness, Pickles P. I bought... So heard that I bought a cockatiel. Do I think I'd buy a budgie? Um, budgies can be bullies, as Adora said. So another cockatiel would be ideal. Uh, Lemon Rice, can you share any tips for beginning the transition from pellets in a bowl to pellets available in foraging formats? My conya ditches pellets in its foraging toys, mostly because it's not a seed. Um, so if you watch our channel often, me and Sophie aren't the biggest fans of pellets. We think there's much better ways to feed a parrot. Um, if you want to try and um feed pellets available try and make them more appealing i guess but not in don't feed them horrible sugary pellets or anything like that to make them more appealing um try and find a way to motivate them for that pellet or just have the pellet in the main diet and use the seeds which are more motivating for foraging so if the pellets aren't motivating then they're not really going to want to forage for them so keep the seeds there um what game ago why they're not in the same cage are you talking about everyone um because they're all rescues they will have their own sort of um backgrounds they don't all get on um, again, this is something that crops up often. Like, for example, the boys and Olive get on very well. Pickles gets on with the boys. Louis and Kipling get on with no one at the moment. Scampy. Scampy generally gets on with most uh, birds, but he is very um, flighty and with other colonies, he can be very naughty. Are you going to wave for everyone? Are you going to spin for everyone? Are you going to spin? I'm not doing this cue right because I can't wave my hand properly because I'm trying to hold it above you. Everything's like a lot lower. So, yeah, are you going to go back? He just wanted to say that. One second. I want to make sure he doesn't want to drink. You thirsty? No, you just want to say hello. You just want to check in. That's cute. I can tell you what, let me leave this over here on my desk just in case you want to drink later. Right. Blimey. Let's see what we can do. I'm glad some people are also helping out in the chat. Thank you for sort of um, talking to each other. Again, like I said, we all have something to contribute. Uh, thank you, Adara, for being naughty. I haven't actually reached a comment yet, but I'm just noticed. Thank you very much. Um, naughty behavior from Adara is something, it's a like an in joke. Whenever someone donates something or whatever to the channel, it's called being naughty. It's a very British thing, it is an in joke, but yeah, I'm not actually trying to insult Adara. I'm just, it's, it's our way of showing gratitude, basically. <laughs> I love the pickle story too, Klaus, but I can't keep doing it. Maybe towards the end. Natasha Fawzi, how do you train your birds to be comfortable putting on a leg leash? I'm hoping to be able to put it on without having to restrain them and cause more stress. Um, we're not the biggest fans of them. 
Um, we prefer like aviator harnesses, proper harnesses, and they are a pain to train, but they're much better if you're bird. With the leg harnesses, you can have all sorts of problems. Do you mind if I look at the um, All sorts of issues. Do you want to say hello? Would you want training as well now? So yeah, we wouldn't recommend a leg harness. Go for a proper harness. In the way for everyone? You know what? You're so lazy. Pickles pee indeed. Now see, again, Sophie's already addressing that. No, it's scrolling too quickly. Celia, I've got a kebab toy in my cockatoo. She doesn't play with it. Uh, you need to encourage her. Maybe put something appealing on it. Make it a more interesting, a sort of exciting toy. Yeah, it's just like Gina said, you know, you need to show, we need to teach our birds how to interact with the environment and train them to actually play with things. Just like with a child, they don't automatically know. They need to be taught. And targeting is very useful for that as well. So Will Indian Girl, hello. I do have a question I'm conflicted with. My birdie needs uninterrupted sleep, but sometimes I may have to turn a light on. Is it okay to have a nightlight on or keep it pitch black? 100% nightlight. We, for cockatiels especially, we recommend nightlights because it reduces the risk of night frights. Do you want to go back to that bowl again? Which you're not having my drinky. It's not for you. It's not my conyers. Oh my God. She's so spoiled. You can come over and sit with me then. Um, so yeah, a nightlight's completely fine. Um, don't forget, you can partially cover if you really are a night owl, but we don't recommend full covering. And uh, Sophie's going to recommend a video. I, I've seen your, your camera footage with Indian Girl. It's really cute. Sherry, Barney made a nest in the playroom before I even knew that they had eggs. I've never seen a mate. Yeah, it can happen. And budgies can be bullies, Mr. Teeny. Completely true. Yeah, budgies can bully us as well. The little terrors. I saw budgies hang out with the sparrows. How cute is that? Sherry, I don't. I wouldn't say I hate pellets. Pellets were a good idea. I just think there's better ways of feeding our cats. Well, for example, occasionally we will provide tops pellets because we feel they're the best ones. They're cold pressed, they're natural, and a lot of the problems with pellets aren't there. If you want to learn about pellets and why we, we're a bit hesitant about them, watch my interview with Dr. Jason Crean. It's uh, a good eye opener and it does explain things very carefully. Sky tacos. My cockatiels get aggressive from time to time. It happens suddenly. It could be hormone related. It could be environmental. It does happen. It's just. So observing the environment, seeing why they're getting aggressive. Yeah, Joe, is, uh, is that working for you, cutting down the treats and extra food? You know, you, you don't want to cut down too much. You can't have my drink. If you look, here's your drinky. Are you thirsty? She, look, she, she's like, I'm not having my drink. I want your drink. My drink has sugar in it and things you don't want. We don't want you to have. So, Adara, finally, I'll get to this comment. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have my drinky. You're not, gonna, you're not allowed? No, look, look at this. It is not for you. People who don't like to use substrate usually say it's because they worry about the having access to poop. How much of a concern is it for birds to be able to possibly chew on their poop? It is a minor concern, I'd say. It's not a massive concern. Uh, as long as they're not doing it constantly, then that indicates a, a deficiency or problem. However, if you think about it, so people use that as an excuse. I find it's a really bad one for not using substrate. If you have bars at the bottom of the cage, have you seen the amount of poo that sticks to it? I used bars in the past as well. The amount of poo on it, and they go down there, or maybe they don't. Maybe they just, the floor of the cage is so bad they don't want to. But the bars that stick to it, and I've, I've seen on little mini videos and clips of people showing cute stuff where they're picking at it, and it's just horrible. It's gross. So, yeah, it's not. It's, it's a minor concern, but with bars, it's even worse. I don't really see it as a reason not to use substrate. Uh, da -da 99. Do you have any food recommendations for birds under the weather to keep them hydrated, etc.? Um, apple cider vinegar is good. Um, if you supplement that in their um, uh, their liquid in their water with that, she's just obsessing over my drink now. I'm gonna have to move into the other room in a second. Uh, apple cider vinegar is good. You can use cayenne pepper. It's a mild. Hello again. Hello, friend. Do a treat. Good boy. Um, there's a video on, on first aid for birds, it might be worth, worth um, watching. And also just make sure they're getting all the stuff they need to in their, in their diet. You can even supplement it with um, some vitamins at that time, although we don't generally believe in vitamin supplementation. He's getting excited now. Will Indian Girl, I have plain pellets and fruit and vegetable ones. I mix them together so she can get the nutrients. I don't know if that's right. That's why I'm going on a course. So um, fruit and vegetable pellets, it may be worth you just DMing me or Sophie so we can look at the pellets and talk talk about it as well, rather than me sort of talking about it now. So if you do want to talk about the pellets and what's in there, we're happy to chat to you and sort of go over it with you because you are a patron, you know, and we, we're happy to help. We're happy to help everyone, but, you know. Any sense of making the process of boarding easier in a conya? Uh, so get them used to where they're going for boarding. Hello, what do you want? Get them used to going to the place. Get them used to the person they'll be boarding with. Get them used to moving in a travel carrier. What's wrong, little man? Do you want drinking now? Is that what the problem is? 
I can't believe you guys aren't thirsty yet. You're eating so much. Um, so yeah, get them used to the going to the shop um, in their carrier. Just decent into the whole process. Have I almost caught up? Am I, am I getting there? Or am I still miles behind? Uh, almost there. You do. You guys do love being naughty in chats, Gina. Sky tag suddenly aggressive. He looks to get into cabinets, small drawers. Yeah, that Sky. That sounds like hormones to me. Um, is this hormones? Yes, basically it's hormones. Oh, sweat. Oh, okay. So Sophie's prepared the fake drink for the drink. This is just water I'm giving them. Oh, isn't it nice? Mm. You want to you want a technique from getting to drink things they shouldn't? Just put it in one of your glasses. It's just water. My drink is elsewhere. Look at this monster. She, and she she even think I swear it's like um she's imagining what it should taste like. <laughs> she's just drinking. Do you wanna do you want to entertain these two monsters before he steps on something that turns the live off? Look at him posh. Oh my god, these guys are so cheeky. This is why I like these guys, they're so full of personality. What do you want? You do it for me. You can kiss me on the, you can kiss me on screen before you go. Has someone got a... I think Chip may have his nose. Could you handle scan his eyes continue this live stream? And then, yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's try and catch up. There's the chaos part. Uh, Mandy's Beauty. When I take one new bird to the vet, the one that keeps breaking her feather, do I keep both in the same trouble case that they're stressed? That's up to you. If they're happier together and they're both okay, you can do that, or you can do it separate. I mean, I'd probably take them together and you both get a checkup, potentially. Uh, Chloe, yes, you can add apple cider vinegar to water. Sophie's got an excellent video all about apple cider vinegar. It's better than what I've got, so I suggest watching her video. You can watch my Parrot First Aid video if you want a quick introduction. Sophie's video is a lot more. It's a lot more detailed. Um, just make sure you get proportion right. Yeah, they are like that, and it's quite funny. You can use it to trick them to drink things they, they, they should be drinking rather than what they shouldn't be. Yeah, decoy bowl at dinner. It's always a very good... Yeah, we'll get chip and fish out for the last little bit. Um, I'll be live for another um, maybe 15 minutes, then I'll be packing up. So if there's any more questions you want to ask, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll get the boys out because they're kicking off and they're obviously missing out on all the fun, so they're getting a bit annoyed at me. Uh, so A decoy bowl at dinner, yeah, it's a very good idea. Um, we don't have the birds out at dinner very often, but when we do, we have sort of like give them their own thing so it's a flock feed. Normally, what's quite funny is when we eat our dinner, they'll all go to their bowls and have another snack same at lunchtime is quite cute to see is they are very inquisitive Gina's last minute I was, I was wondering if we were going to get a session without you being naughty I just don't think you can resist can you Gina so thank you very much um, as always you can't resist uh, thank you yeah so where, where have you gone off to you gone back to the chat it's up to you if you want to sort of um, hang around or you want to lurk do you know which one's my drink which one's theirs now this one's mine I'll quick sip We'll get the boys on camera in a second as well once they filled up. Because that's probably why they're yelling, because they're jealous they weren't getting this nice snacks. Because they've had their dry mix, but they had this. We tend to put like some more treat foods in the bowls when they're doing live streams. We're doing live streams. Oh my goodness! And uh, now it's Alice as well who's being naughty. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. No, we are very grateful to all of you who support us because it does help a lot. And thank you very much, to Gina, Alice, and Adara, especially for the, the, the donations, basically. <laughs> So let me catch up a little bit. Uh, and then we'll have the boys out for the last 10 minutes or so. So my birds, uh, Natasha, my birds start making a lot of noise when we leave them alone. And this can go off quite some time. Some say that we can reward them when they quiet down. Would you recommend that? Yes. Yeah, so you want to reward for calm. If they're making lots of noise, they're basically wondering where you're going. You're part of the flock. Um, you can reward them for being calm and relaxed, just like people have suggested. You can play some negative reinforcement games with them, like putting more distance between. You can even get ready to go out. And then take everything off again. And that can sometimes be a thing. So then your boys like, hang on, I thought they were going out, but they're not. So it can sort of lead to um, less expectation of going out. Uh, yes, yes, Sherry. Um, not at the end of this live stream. There will be news, but we'll be doing it separately. We'll be doing a dedicated video like we always do with sort of uh, announcements and stuff. The news will be coming out in two weeks. Yeah, something like that. So keep your eyes peeled. You can't resist, Gina. You can't resist. And it may, I mean, we're so grateful for it, but I'm always like, ah, what do I say? So that's one of the naughty things, the British awkwardness. And for Alice as well. And, and now Klaus. Thank you very much, Klaus, for being very naughty as well. Exceptionally naughty, Klaus. <laughs> very, very naughty. Are you feeling better, a little bit better, Sophie? 
Sophie's okay. She's just sort of pulling a face at I'm me not, now. Not, let's be honest here. We're all friends here. I'm having a really bad day. Yes, yeah, difficult so, day. There we go. <laughs> it's a tough day. It started off badly for us both. I'm trying to, like, for this, it's like an excuse for me to sort of like lift myself out of it and behave. Sophie hasn't got a life today, so she hasn't got that excuse. So let's do some more questions. I don't want to miss anyone. So Lily A, thank you for this. How do I get my cockatiel to not be aggressive with people she meets for the first time? She's friendly with the family, but anyone new approaches her, she goes to bite. Um, she she's just um, defending her flock. She doesn't know these people. It's like, I mean, obviously humans don't react by biting people they don't know, but um, you can imagine she'd be very hesitant. So with people, you could, um, I, saw, I almost gave a trade secret away there. I'm not allowed to do that. It's desperate consoles only, I'm afraid. So what you premium. want to, premium <laughs> secret. Yeah, so I'm not allowed to do that because I'll get told off. Um, there is a technique, but we, we can't put it out publicly because it'll get ripped off and shared around the internet. And then basically, yeah. So, um, but as a technique and approach, you can do get a decent to these other people, get them coming in, get them to do some targeting through the bars with them. So she, she knows she will get to, excuse me, getting tongue tied. She will get to know these people through protective contacts. She'll be behind the bar. So it'll be safe for her in her safe space, safe for them. And they can just feed her treats and they can give her treats and do some targeting. And then she'll start to associate new people with positive things and she'll be less aggressive and it's safer for everyone. Lemon Rice, we have a clean sock over the bars of our conyers cage when she snuggles with at night. She doesn't seem to chew it or interact with it during the day. Is that sock an idea or a danger? Uh, yes and no. So if she doesn't chew it, it's less of a danger. I wouldn't really recommend a sock. We tend to recommend like a cuddle toy, um, natural toy. Like Olive has a cuddle toy. Do you want to come over and watch the switch? You're such a good boy. Your chibi's going to come over in a second. Yeah, you want a cuddle toy. Um, a sock's not the best idea. Like we don't recommend cozy hearts. Mr. Teeny, we don't ever expect naughtiness. We're grateful for it. We never expect it. So thank you for the thought and for being naughty last time. And also thank you again, Klaus. Now I've actually caught with that bit in the chat. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's probably a crow then. I think we can let them sit up there and relax for a little bit. Uh, where am I? Gina is the live stream hero. Uh, Sky Attacker, should I give our boy a small box in his cage? He keeps going to the bottom of his large cage, sometimes swoops down from the top. So when you say a, a small box, if you have set them up a little foraging tray at the bottom of the cage, like an open box, that's completely fine. You don't want anything enclosed because that's like a nest box. It might encourage hormonal behavior. But you have a little box, open top box, not too deep, obviously. And you put some stuff in there. It can be really fun. It can be really good. A lot of parrots really enjoy it. We strongly encourage um, foraging. <laughs> Her kebab post from the other day looked too good not to nibble on. I mean, who wouldn't want to nibble on a kebab? Um, I'd prefer a more meaty one rather than um, a vegetable kebab or kebab. I just can't help kissing their tummies. Adara, you've been naughty yet again. Thank you, as always. And this little emoji, it's a heart to you as well. Um, something I, This is something actually I was going to mention. I didn't put on my note sheet. People comment that I do kiss my birds. So there's two reasons I kiss my birds. One, it's a very quick, very dry kiss, and it's um, not like an overstimulated thing. Number two, I want that behavior trained with our birds. Why do I want it trained? Because it allows me to feel their keel bone whenever I want. I don't know if this will let me. I don't want to disturb him too much. So the keel bone's here. And if you, thank you, fish, and <laughs> go back to your snacks. If you feel their keel bone, you can get an indication of health and weight. If the keel bone is very prominent, you can probably assume they're a bit underweight and you can, you know, you'll maybe want to feed them up a little bit more. If it's, what's wrong? Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to tell me off. If it's like, if there's loads of like meat around there, and then they're probably a bit big and it's a very easy way because your lips are quite sensitive or your nose and you can feel that kill very easily so i i try to train it all our birds uh i wouldn't risk it with kipling i'm starting to do it with louis but all of our birds will accept that sort of kiss and it's a very easy way of testing their kill bone uh, obviously apart from the obvious of weighing them but um sometimes that may not indicate the same thing as seeing their kill bone so it's very useful me and sophie both do it and it's a productive way of using a kiss rather than just kissing them all over and getting them overexcited on the back, etc. So it's very good. So, guys, if anyone... What's that? Yes, Mr. Teen, that's a great idea. A large plate you put under a, a big flower pot. Anything can be a foraging tray, you know, as long as it's quite big and it's got, um, it's got a small lip and you, you can put your substrate and bits and pieces in there. It doesn't even have to be substrate, just toys and stuff. If anyone has any last-minute questions, now's the time. We've got about five more minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to probably the boys to just mind their own business, enjoy themselves. They're not really, in, don't seem in the mood to interact at the moment. 
So any questions, please feel free to shoot them over. And again, a gratitude to all of you for watching me and a big gratitude to those people who have donated some money. Again, always helpful. Don't forget, another plug while we're talking about money, nutritional enrichment course. Join us. We'll be good and you'll learn lots about nutritional enrichment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie's not as enthusiastic about it, but yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. We're just literally finishing final touches and we're always finding extras to add. And we have scientific studies because everyone loves scientific actual, studies. Everyone likes science. to say, show me a study. So we're going to show you a study <laughs> to prove our points. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. And I hope you guys who signed up too. And thank you so much to everyone who has signed up. We're just really excited to share knowledge and collaborate. What do we use to weigh our birds? Um, we use a little kitchen scale. I think Sophie can actually show it to you. We can she can wave it in front of the screen. Just basically, it's an Amazon basics kitchen scale with a, a tea stand on top. You can, you know, it's just a scale basically. And you train them to go on it, you train them to get off, reward them. It's really easy. Jennifer, I kiss mine on the beak, but always make sure my lips are dry. Yeah, uh, it's important to make sure your lips are dry because our saliva ain't very good for them. You don't want to be no wet kisses. No wet kisses. It's, uh, it's not very good. Platonic friendship Cardboard egg cartons are very good. Yes, definitely, Adara. We love them. How long would a course be? Um, I think we may, we shouldn't, we should have called it a seminar really around the course. Basically, it's an hour and a half. Roughly. roughly an hour and a half so um in terms of what it's going to be we're going to have a little introduction bit where people filter in we're going to go through all the elements of nutritional enrichment i've sort of alluded to some of it now but it'll be a lot more detail we'll talk about some studies we'll talk about ways you can enrich your bird's life through nutritional enrichment why it's important <laughs> she be singing and then we'll have some question time after as well we're trying to allow at least 15 minutes for questions because it won't be recorded and it is a one-off thing we will try and maybe make it available as something later on but it's a lot easier to do a live course with um, slides that people can take notes off of rather than trying to do everything and get the lighting right for a recording. So it's going to be about that. It's hopefully going to be lots of fun for all you all and everyone can enjoy it. During hormonal behavior, what should be, um, so watch basically as we come into the end sky, watch my hormone videos. That'll be the most useful thing. Manly, no problems at all. Always happy to answer questions. Do bring notes if you, uh, notepad if you're um, watching the course, it will be useful. Yeah, Sophie Burrito. I think we have work later, so there won't be any Sophie Burrito for a while. We have a consult we need to do. A very sweet little little cockatiel. Thank you, Carrie. Um, Thank you, Carrie. Very, very um, kind of you to say. We just, we we need more people to watch us, darn it. We want more people to watch us because we we don't tell our own horn, but we're doing all right. You know, we're learning more. I mean, do you want another story? Give me another sneak peek. I'm thinking of doing maybe a master's mm -hmm. in um, a PG, cert, a PG, PG cert, cert, basically a postgraduate um, course to do with animal behaviour. Sophie found a course for me, and I'm thinking, well, why not? I want to learn more. I want to expand my knowledge. I'm thinking of doing that. So, yeah, we're all learning, and we want to apply that, that knowledge and help share it with everyone. <laughs> I'm hoping one day we win the lottery or something, so we can just do it all for free. Yeah, Everyone just get... You know what I mean, that other thing. <laughs> the other th <laughs> the YouTube views lottery where we are. Yeah, yeah, YouTube views lottery. <laughs> Oh, so Sophie um, got approached by YouTube recently. We got really excited for a video of Olive and they did, and they put it on their stories and it was weird pets. And also what was really annoying is it seemed a bit fixed as well for the votes as well. And it was so, Olive was so cute. She was doing a dance. She's not a weird pet. She's cute. She's up against a, a really cute iguana and a rabbit that was eating. I'm like a rabbit that was eating. Yeah. Lemon rice has been eating. That says it all. A lemon rice, very naughty. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining. I think it's your first um, excursion in a naughty club. I like the emoji as well. Um, yeah, do try as, as, make sure there's a stand on the scale um, because it does. It can be a bit inaccurate sometimes. And you can also take an average. Do free um, weighings and take an average of it to help. It's just basically you want to get a baseline and, and sort of maintain it. Uh, freeze dry is good for dry mix. Yeah, freeze dried veggies are awesome. In because freeze dried are, like retains more than dried, basically. Sophie says ninety five percent. There you go. She yeah, lemon rice joined naughty club. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you. The voting method was really silly. I was like, what is this? It's like a fix almost. Right, lemon rice. We we got squeezing like two questions. Sophie's looking at me. Right, it's time to cook chicken wings in a minute. Do you want to pop the boys away while we're um, while I'm do. wrapping up, and then we'll finish? Your mum, your mum's just popped in. Uh -huh. We'll have to go on for at least two more minutes now because <laughs> Sophie wants to say hi, Sophie's mum. Hi, Sophie's <laughs> mum. Everyone has to say hi to Sophie's mum. Uh, the lemon rice, other than Planet Pleasures, who we talk about all the time for um, enrichment and toys and stuff. Uh, MySafeBirdToys.com, I think it is. 
is amazing. You get all the different toy parts and yeah, stuff really you make good. your own, but it's also really affordable in the US. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Yes, loads of good places. US, you US guys are spoiled. Um, it's getting better in the UK and Europe, although with Brexit, getting stuff from Europe is a pain. But in the UK, it's getting better. And we're trying to promote it. I like, I actively, so we're we're quite affiliated with Northern Parrots. We quite like them as a store in the UK. And we're, I'm constantly trying to email them ideas. Like, this, I like this toy. It'll be good. Giving them feedback and all sorts of things. That's okay, Carol. Thank you for joining me. We're, I'm actually about to wrap up. So I'm going to stay on for another minute just for you. And then I'm going to wrap it up. Sophie's just popping the boys back. You missed some excitement. And um, there was tears. There was laughs. There was fun. There was me rambling repeatedly for over an hour. I don't know how I don't know how you guys tolerate it to be honest. I can't believe people sit here and listen to me for an hour. I mean, my students in the past had to listen to me like, and they don't look so bored. Even when I was enthusiastic about my subjects, they were like, mm. so thank you guys for being so enthusiastic and helping me um, teach people. Good, and these recommendations are good. Keep on recommending to other people. Christine's Chop Shop is very good. Uh, yeah, definitely. I've, I've heard that one crop yeah, up yeah. before. Thank you, Peggy. Take care. Right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start wrapping things up. Thank you all for joining me. I hope um, you enjoyed the chaos. As you said, we're, we would like to say we're pretty good bird trainers, but not, not everything's perfect. You know, Olive didn't want to step up and I'm not going to force her. So sometimes you have to cross these bridges and deal with these things. Um, if you can deal with Mandy's question, please. Uh, so he's going to ask you a question in chat, Mandy. Um, so, yeah, we will. Cro everyone crosses these training issues. It's just the way it happens. You know, don't feel bad about it. Everyone does. A lot of people try and hide it on social media, but we're not like that. <laughs> we're bird trainers. We want to be as honest as possible. And we want people to learn from our mistakes, from each other's mistakes. Everyone to just basically learn. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. From me, Sophie and the flock, she's waving. Mm -hmm. I hope you all have a really good weekend and see you later.